Psalm 1, the book of Psalms. Psalm number 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinner in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And the word has already been blessed. And I'm going to open up with a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we humble ourselves before your throne. Give you thanks and praise for another morning that you've allowed us to see. Thank, Thank you for you life. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your kindness and your compassion. Thank you for allowing us to see a brand new day on this October 14, 2018. God, we count it a privilege to be in the land of the living and be in the land of the free. God, this is the day that you have made and you shall rejoice and be glad in it. Lord God, and help us to rejoice about being alive. You said that the enemy would come to steal, kill, and destroy, but you said I'll come that you might have life and there more abundantly. And God, we thank you for the abundance that you have given unto us to live another day. Thank you for breathing on us. Thank you for keeping us, washing us, delivering us, processing us, strengthening us to live another day in this god framed world, Lord God. And even those that don't know you, Lord, that they'll come to know you as Lord and Savior. That you keep your hand of mercy upon those, Lord God, and that they, when they come to know you, that they'll yield to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. And Father, we thank you right now for what you're getting ready to do as we partake in the word of God. Even in worship and praise, God, we thank you for who you are. And Lord God, order our steps on this week, Lord God, even every test and every trial that we're getting ready to go through. God, we speak peace to the situation and we speak victory over it right now. And Father, we honor you for who you are. And we thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You have a pen?
Yes, it is. Yes, it is. How do you think? I know you have to, the weather keeps changing back and forth. So if you get taking vitamins and. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And up and down. That's a new button. So it can flow. And them songs are really helping us with it too.
Amen. 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 Anybody enjoy those songs of worship? Amen. We're going to come to you from St. John chapter 14. St. <clears throat> John chapter 14. The New Testament. St. John chapter 14, starting at verse 16. And it says here, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comfort. St. John chapter 14, verse 16. And it says, and I will pray the Father. Okay. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him for he dwelleth with you, and he shall be in you. Verse 18 says, And I will not leave you comfortless, and I will come to you. Verse 20 says, At that day ye shall know that I am in thy Father, and ye are in me, and I in you. The Comforter. Jesus Christ is the Comforter. And we're looking at the author, John, being Jesus, the Son of God, Date writing AD 80 95. And this is the purpose. John states the purpose of this writing, namely that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that believing that we may have life through Jesus. Ancient Greek manuscripts of John have one or two tenths of the word believe. Of subject that you might believe or believe in. And we do, that, we do all believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Yeah. The present is subjective that you might go on believing. Uh, John intended the former, he wrote, convince unbelievers to believe on the Lordship of Jesus Christ and be saved. If the latter, John wrote, to strengthen the foundation of their faith so that believers might go on believing in spite of the false teachings and so to enter fully into fellowship with the Father and of the Son. While both these purposes find support in John, the contents of the gospel as the whole favor and the latter emphasis as the overriding purpose. So he was writing and telling people that did not believe come to know Jesus Christ. His writing was very simple. So he's teaching on what? Salvation. And we all need a Savior. He is already our Savior. He is already the head of our life. And he was teaching them that so they know. But in that, he's sitting in there writing, John is, but he's writing notes. And this is what we cover up with chapters, Bibles, verses. So after, even when he leaves the scene, this word is about Jesus Christ. It's about Jesus Christ. And when you sit up under somebody like Jesus, who was the shepherd, the good shepherd, he told you, if anybody else come besides me or go through any window or any door, is a thief and a robber. There is no other way. The scripture says, I am the way, what? The truth and the life. You can't go any other way. You have other people who are trying to get into the church, but through a window and through a door. When you have to go where? To the altar, to the cross. You can't go any other way. We've all been born and raised in the church. That's all I know is church. Couldn't go anywhere else. Tried to walk in the club and walk right back out of the club. Because that's not where God was calling me to go. He was calling me to go to the church. But even after Jesus finished teaching these 12 disciples, he's equipping them, nurturing them, talking to them, ministering to them. You can teach people, but they're only going to grasp so much. You can ask somebody after the sermon, 15 minutes later, what did you learn? They only give you about 10%. <laughs> or 5%. And that's not being critical. My first bishop told me that. 
He said, Minister Newman, back in the day, he said, you can teach all you want. You're a good teacher. But people don't grasp like they should. Sometimes our mind wander off. We don't mean to. That's how we are. We're natural. We're human. But then when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, God moves out that carnal thinking and put in his spiritual thoughts inside of us with the knowledge of the word. You can't read two or three different books and talk about why well, I believe in the Bible. You got people now who want to take the Bible and I don't, I'm not preaching up against somebody else's doctrine or the Quran. That's not me. I've heard of it. That's a good book. But I'd rather stay with the book. Mm -hmm. The book. You, can, you, you can't go back and forth and say you love this one or you love that one. No, stick with the book. My dad was a Muslim. No offense. Man. But I respected him. That's who he chose to serve. And I'll never forget I had a dream back in the, uh, I think the late 90s, early 2000s. And it was the cover of Jet Magazine. Now you can take it how you want it. It, it tickled me and I kind of laughed myself. And in this cover of Jet Magazine, I was at the top, right here, the picture. And it was a slash, my father's picture at the bottom. I'm at the top, he at the bottom. And they were saying, who do you believe in? Jesus Christ or Allah? And we both were on the cover of Jet Magazine. Now I hear people say to me, your dad was Muslim. And I said, yeah. Why didn't you get converted? Because he was absent for 20 years. So while he was absent, I got saved. And when he came into the picture, he was already a Muslim. Mm -hmm. Those were the steps that God ordered. Did I fight against him? No. I never fight against another man and his beliefs. The Bible is not debatable. You're not supposed to debate. You argue about the scripture. You explain the scripture. You teach the scripture. You stick with the word. The word is the firm foundation. Jesus Christ is the rock, the chief cornerstone. And if you look up the words God or gods, it all tell you it points back what? To one God. So what am I telling you? When Jesus left the scene in his teaching, he was teaching them that he would not leave them comfortless. His assignment was now over. He was to die on the cross. No one took his life, he laid it down. So while he's now off the scene, John is writing about him, them being full of comfort. He's going back to be with who? The Father, on the right hand of the Father. And that's the place where we have to remember. When we leave here, we go back to our maker, our sustainer, our comforter. Uh, we are joint heirs and with heirs with Christ. Once you confess and you believe and been filled, that's it. You continue to do the work, the praying, the fasting, the study of the word. And this is what I tell people in, to, in this day. Stop telling people how saved you are. You don't have to go through those, those different flips and modes. Tell me how holy you are, how gifted you are. The people going to recognize if you are or are not of Christ. Your character shows who you are. You don't have to preach all over people, spitting all over people, blowing cloths all over people. Don't take all that. Those are theatrics. That's a bunch of show and tell. But if you're in Christ, you walk with a humble spirit. You walk what we say, walk softly in the word. You never have to prove who you are. The people going to know it's something different about you. Because you have what? The comforter. So that's what he was teaching them. They need the comforter. And the comforter did come after he left. It says here, Jesus calls the Holy Spirit another name. Or translate Greek word, patmosis. Meaning, literally, one called alongside to help. The comforter is our help. This is the rich word meaning comforter, strengthener, counselor, helper, advisor, advocate, ally, and friend. When you're going through your worst in this day, in your bad days, where do you think your strength comes from? The comforter, Jesus Christ. He's your help. He's your friend. When you feel friendless and no one to talk to, he's your friend. Jesus is the only friend that you can go tell your business to, and he'll never tell it. Somebody said, that's, that's a tripped out statement, but it is the truth. Whenever you went into prayer and God revealed and you poured your heart out to the Lord and gave your heart to him and gave him your problems, 
Well, did you did you get up feeling relieved? Yes. Did you feel that the Lord was going to tell your business? No. Whatever goes on in your life between you and the Lord is a private thing. Sometimes, as believers, we tell too much. And we talk too much. Sometimes God will say, shh. Sometimes you'll be in prayer and God said, let me minister to you. Before that we go into prayer, we're going to do most of the talking. Where actuality, the talking comes from him. And when the Lord starts to talk to you, is based in scripture. So what is he teaching them? About the comforter. You need the comforter and strength from the Lord on a daily basis. You see what type of day we're living in. And these are some rough days, amen? amen. These are some rough days. Mm -hmm. But the comforter is the one that strengthens you. And it says here, meaning another different kind, in other words, the Holy Spirit, that Christ himself did while on earth. Jesus promises to send another comforter. The Holy Spirit would do for the disciples what Christ did for them. While he was with them, the Spirit will be there on their side to help strengthen them. And it says here, teach the truth, course of their lives, to comfort difficult situations. How many of us have been in difficult situations? And the Lord had to come along home, home side to help you. And it's also when you can't pray to intercede in prayer. You need the Holy Spirit, the comforter, to intercede through you sometimes. Some days you don't feel like getting up to pray. And you can't get your words together. But the comforter comes in and steps inside of you and gives you what to pray. Not always praying for yourself, but sometimes the Holy Spirit will say, now pray for them. Have you ever been in prayer and you've seen faces? Well, God, I wish you pray for sister so-and-so and so. Somebody called you the day before and said they're going through some situations and circumstances. And the Lord, when you went into prayer, you began to call their name out. And you began to pray for them. You always need the comforter to intercede. You don't do all the talking, you let them talk to you. You don't just pray for yourself and I, 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 I. No, pray for others. That's how you get blessed. What you do in secret, he'll reward you openly. You pray for people. I don't have so now... When people ask me to pray for them, I don't wait to go home to pray for them. I pray for them at an instant. And I don't pray to be loud and flamboyant and be pushing their head back and slamming them on the concrete. You ain't got to do all that. Just pray for them, touch their shoulder, and start praying for them. Quietly. Everybody don't need to know what you're praying for. You pray for people. When they say any prayer, stop what you're doing and go and pray for them. Mm -hmm. Pray for people. Pray for yourself. There's days when God say, okay, let's, let's talk. Let me, let me intercede through you. Let me pray for you. I mm -hmm. So we have to pray for one another. No. Mm -hmm. Pray for one another and then pray for yourself. Okay. Sometimes you be the last person to pray for is yourself. But guess who gives you the strength? The comforter. Oh, yeah. You need strength on these days. Mm -hmm. The comforter in any difficult situation, the prayer for them. It says, to be a friend a further than best interest, to remain in there forever. The word applied to the Lord, Lord Jesus. Therefore, Jesus is our helper, our intercessor from heaven. While the Holy Spirit is indwelling helper and interce intercessor on the earth. Mm -hmm. He's the intercessor on the earth. When we cannot pray for ourselves, he prays for us. Have you ever been in a season where you just you just couldn't say anything? You just you felt flat. There was nothing going on there. You, you didn't have the words to say. But Jesus Himself just you know you're gonna be okay. You're gonna make it through this. Nobody come visit you. Nobody come talk to you. But Jesus give you that strength to say you know what you're gonna make it through this. Uh -huh. If ever, if you've ever been tested and failed a test, naturally or spiritually, guess what? If you don't pass that test. That test is coming up again. And it's not so much God testing you. He wants to see what your character is. Can they go through this? You've heard people say in their darkest hour. They didn't seem like they were going to make it through. But guess who helped make them through? The Lord. That's still dealing with the comforter. Verse 18 says, And I will not leave you comfortless, and I will come to you. He would not leave us confidence. It says here, Jesus reveals to himself to the obedience believers through the Holy Spirit who make himself known the personal presence 
of Jesus in and all with who loves him. Now, if you really love him, he's in your heart. If you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, he is in you. He lives in you. Sometimes you can't tell because sometimes our character can be off. We've had our days when we up and down emotionally. And I'm learning now to stay out of my feelings. Get your feelings out the way. You know, sometimes we get in our feelings too much. But the Bible says he is touched by our what? Infirmities. And our what? Feelings. He's touched by our feelings. He knows everything we think about ourselves and what we think about others. Like I was telling Sister Pam, had a situation yesterday at that reunion. I had to make peace with somebody. I was like, huh? <laughs> 30 years later, what? Oh, I ain't do all that. <laughs> so I went over there finally. They came from the back and I went over to them and apologized. And they said, no, I don't think you're doing anything to me. And the Lord said, I just want to see where your character was. When you are a Christian, a real bona fide believer, even though you did nothing wrong, you may have thought about what people have done to you, to show that you have character in the Lord, God have you apologize first. You have you apologize first to say, okay, I want you to go over here and apologize to that man. And my friend of mine who's a prophetess, she said she went through the exact same thing. She said, but Lord, why do I always got to apologize first? He said, because I'm still using you. I'm the one that called you. You are in my kingdom. In my kingdom, they have characteristics. The first fruit of the spirit is what? Love. So our character is going to be tested. But guess who always tap you on the shoulder and tell you, make that right with them. And when I made it right with the person, when I, when I finished talking to the young man, the spirit of peace went right across the place. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure your heart is intact while you're serving with the Lord. God is writing down everything we think, say, sense, the whole nine. It's one thing to profess to be a Christian, but it's another one to walk in it. And I said, Father, he said, I said, make peace with him. Had a dream that he even came to the place. And he showed up in the same, in the dream, he had on a black shirt. Did he not show up in that black shirt? And the Lord said, he's going to be late. He came in at 930. And I watched him when he walked in and said, go over here and make peace with that brother. I slept like a baby last night. When God tells you to do something, you better get that stuff straight. I apologize to somebody else earlier this year about some stuff. Went straight to sleep, knocked out. That was a load being lifted. But in the same breath, what I'm trying to tell you, you'll feel the comforter. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he is a wonderful counselor. So what do you think God is telling us today? Even while he comforts us, he's counseling us. Do we get it right all the time? No. Do you, does that need to be broadcast all the time? No. And I'm going to tell you something else. Even when you have a testimony, some testimonies don't need to be mentioned in church. That's why they've taken testimony services out of the church. Because people were telling too much. You let the Holy Spirit give you godly counsel and counsel you out of your situation. Mm -hmm. Can we become fine-tuned and keen while we're walking in the world? Yes, we can. Is one holier than another? No, we're not. Are all on the same spiritual wavelength? No, we're not. There's some of us are on different levels. Mm -hmm. And it takes time to get to that type of level, that height in God. You'll never get this overnight. I've seen people raise themselves up. And I've also seen people fall. Mm -hmm. They felt that the pulpit, they was called to preach, and so on, so so and so on. And screwed up. Did I make my career? No. I walked over to the side and prayed for them. You pray for people. Mm -hmm. At their lowest, you pray for people. When people say, I need somebody to talk to, you talk with them. But talk with them about the word. You ain't got to preach at them. Talk to them about the word. But Jesus here in this text, dealing with them, he's still dealing with the comforter. But you, and Paul, I mean, John is writing about the promise of miracles, the promise of his spirit, and how Jesus is the way. And he is also the promise of a comforter. He comforts us on a daily basis. When we even feel, un, when we feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. 
It's only the Lord trying to get your attention. We carry a lot up in here. A lot. And I have to learn to release, let go. Have you ever been in prayer and you just start weeping uncontrollably? That's the Lord cleansing you. He's taking out what you're holding in so he can what? Comfort you. He don't want you to be bogged down by the troubles of this world. He wants us to always be in his presence. Like those three songs we just listened to. I felt the spirit of peace go across here. Guess who that was? The comforter. Sometimes God will anoint somebody to sing to you and that song ministers to your heart. When you are in the Lord, it takes time to get to that type of level. Mm -hmm. So anything you remember today, remember he is the comforter. He wants his children to feel that he does exist. He is in our hearts, in our mind, and in our spirit. When you leave your home in the morning to take care of your business, God be the comforter. When you lay down at night, God be the comforter. You know, we got a comforter on our bed, but you need the comforter to comfort you at night when you can't sleep. And oftentimes, God shakes us at night because he wants to talk to us, minister to us, minister to us about ourselves. I remember it several times, laying down. And the Lord spoke to me and said, Randy, I don't want you saying that no more. I don't want you acting like that. And I've seen how you looked at so-and-so and so. For a whole hour. I said, can I get to sleep, please? <laughs> no, but I don't want you acting like that no more, Randy. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. Did you ever hear me say Jesus yelled at us? You don't yell. The Holy Spirit is very intelligent. God ought to talk to you about your mess. I don't want you thinking like that no more. Get that out your heart. Stop looking at them like that. Stay away from that over here. I don't want you dealing with so and so and so and so. Sometimes God will talk to you. Real, gentle, calm voice. And I don't want you even for no people over there across the street. Say, huh? Sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell you. Mm -hmm. See that man over there? So and so and so and so and so. I don't want you dealing with that. Like I told you last week, the little lady kept pursuing to come get in the car. And the Holy Spirit kept saying, do not get in that car. Because mm -hmm. she was trying to set me up. Coco mm -hmm. was back there cracking up. <laughs> she said, Randy, wait. I said, the Holy Spirit tapped me on the shoulder and said, do not get in that car. <laughs> God is a gentleman. And shortly after, she told me what her prognosis was, what was wrong with her. And she passed on. The Lord said, that's why I told you not to get in that car. Mm -hmm. God don't let nothing come up on you unaware. Who is that ministering to us? The comforter. Mm -hmm. You ever walk in somebody's house and God will tell you, I don't want you coming back up in here no more. That house carries a certain spirit. One thing my mother said in closing, she said, a house always carries a spirit. Whether it be the White House, your house, or even the church house. She said, you'll learn that when you get older. And sure enough, mm -hmm. she was correct. She was correct. And so the prayer minister said, you will learn as you get older. She said, your great-grandmother was an evangelist. And she told me the same thing. She said, watch people. Watch their motives. And she said, always ask God to give you guidance. And that's what the comforter does. He give us guidance. The scripture says, in all thy ways that we acknowledge him, he shall direct our path. That's still part of a comforter even though that's up under mercy. You have to keep your spiritual eyes open. Not third eye, spiritual eye. One man told me he had a third eye. I said, you'll be okay. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Have a good day. It's going to be all right. Uh, your third eye is a very different gift, isn't it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Watch people. People with all these gifts and talents. Uh, no. If it don't feel like it's from God, don't accept. You ain't got to say nothing. Watch. Learn, you'll learn a person. Hear what I'm saying to you in closing. You'll learn a person by their conversation. You're going to find out where their heart is. Mm -hmm. Even on yesterday, at that reunion, I heard some stuff. Woo. I said, Lord, help us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I prayed for some people, talked with people, a couple of people uh, said they enjoyed the prayer. You know, uh, oh, I've never been a flamboyant. Ms. Mack tell you, a flamboyant preacher. Never been flashy. Not anxious to get behind one of these. Mm -hmm. Never. 
Because even when you stand behind this, you get attacked. You're going to be tested. Mm -hmm. Ministry is not what people think it is. Anybody can preach. But are you ready to be tested after you finish preaching? Right. Sometimes you got to preach to yourself. Because mm -hmm. everybody ain't going to pat you on the back. And I don't even look for those. Mm -hmm. Everybody's not going to invite you to their platform. And that's not what that's for. Your gift is for the world. Grow you up. Also into the world of what? Preach the gospel to every living creature. That's what Jesus said to the disciples before he left. Then the comforter came. So when I do see me in the community, some people I talk to, some people I pray for. You don't have to pray loud and, and vindictive and flashy and smack them all on their forehead and all that. You ain't got to do all that. <laughs> Laying them out under a car. It's going to be all right. <laughs> we ain't got to do all that. Man, come on. Saying it all loud with the mic. Really? You know, there's a way to carry yourself as a believer with humility. If that person doesn't have any humility in them, don't you follow them. If they don't show the first fruit of the Spirit, which is love, don't you follow them. You follow the Word. I tell people now, I go back to the love of God first. God, let the love of God be in this service. When I leave, let the love of God be with me. And not only me, but you all. You got to be sincere in this world. So you can feel the comforter. We need the comforter in every situation and circumstance that we go through. Even when you go on your job, you need the comforter. Mm -hmm. When you wake up in the morning, you need the comforter. Lord, thank you for another day. Now God be throughout this day. Mm -hmm. When you go on to the doctor, whatever the doctor says, so be it. But God, you're higher than any medicine. And everything the doctor tells you is not always the truth. I've seen people go from one doctor to the next, and the doctor told them their prognosis was this, and the other one was a lie. They found nothing. Who is the doctor? Jesus Christ. By his stripes, you're what? Healed. That's still the comforter. So you have to know your place in the word. Know your place in the word and speak the word into the atmosphere. You gotta always feel depressed or depraved. Speak the word. Listen to a couple of songs of worship. That changes the whole atmosphere. That's what gets you through the day, is the anointing. Because Jesus Christ was what? The anointed one. He's the anointed one that keeps us. And sometimes he do send people to encourage us, talk to us, minister to us. So know this, walk in the comforter and ask God to comfort you in your situation. So I pray that the word has blessed everybody on today. Even though we're few in number, we miss those in their absence, keep them in prayer. Pray for them. Pray for them. You pray for folks. You never know what a person goes through when they shut their doors. My mom always said, she said, but you pray for them. If somebody comes to you in confidence about what they're going through, that's not for you to go tell the whole block. You take it and you go into prayer, get your, 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 your those saints and holiness will wash their face, anoint their heads with oil, they get their prayer cloth, get their Bible, and they'll sit before God. You don't just pray for you, you pray for others. Because if you keep praying for you, you become selfish. God wants to hear what's in your heart, not just for you, but for your sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. You pray for your brothers and sisters when they're going through. Because we're all going to be tested. Amen? Amen? So let's be encouraged on this week as we go into another week. But always remember, let God be your strength. Whether it be on the job, whether it be in your home, whether it be in school, whether at the doctor's office, let God be your strength. You know, we hear a lot during the day. And always protect your ear gates and your eye gates. When I say that, everybody can't speak into your ears. Be careful what your ears hear. Even what your eyes see that may, you may not agree with. Always ask God to keep your ear gates and your eye gates covered. You don't want to always see, 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 and hear, hear, hear. Now, Lord, what is you saying? Amen? Amen. Amen. Some of those I'm going to close out in prayer. Do we have any special prayer requests? Any others? Some are private. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we humble ourselves before your throne. God, we thank you again for another day. We thank you for another service. Lord God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you're doing. 
And God, we ask that you keep your hand of mercy upon each and every one of us, Lord God. Even as we go from this place, but not your presence, keep your special touch in your hand upon Sister Pam's sons. And even that unspoken request, Lord God, you already know the situation. Lord God, we ask that you lead, teach, and guide every person in this room. Lord God, keep your hand of mercy upon each and every one of them, Lord God. Let your grace be sufficient for each and every one of them in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And whatever it is, Lord God, that's offending or attacking them, that you'll bring full deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus, dear Master. That your will be done upon each and every soul in this room. Lord God, as we know that you are the comforter and you came to comfort us, even after you comforted the disciples, Lord God. Jesus, we know that you are the comforter. And even in wisdom, you are the Holy One of Israel. You are the anointed one. And you also want to give us counsel in the midnight hours. Help us to keep our face as flint. Help us to keep our face in your presence. Help us to be mindful of the words that we speak. Lord God, help us to speak life over every situation in the name of Jesus. Father, we need help from your throne room. God, we praise you for what you're doing. Keep your hand of mercy upon every person, even those in their absence, Lord God. Lord God, you know who needs to be here, God. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing. And we honor you today, Lord God, and we bless your holy name. And Lord God, we thank you right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Father, I said you bless uh, the food that was prepared for us. Bless the hands that prepared it. We thank you. And remember those that are less fortunate, the poor, the needy, the sick, and the shut in, and even those children uh, in Africa that don't have anything to eat. Lord God, we ask that you bless those places, Lord God, and that they'll be flourished with food, and we won't throw away anything. Will we be grateful for the food? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all got to help me, honey, people here today. I don't know what nothing that. <laughs> <laughs> they can us. Yeah. Well, we got to get your mic on it. Yeah. <laughs> Would you sign it? Yeah, I sure will. And to those who didn't sign it, please sign it. <laughs> <laughs> 